so a viewer of mine um, has asked me to just uh, go over the uh, the um, construction of these uh, uh, load cells um, in more detail uh, you know, from my previous video on how to use these kinds of load cells to do uh, uh, to create isometric uh, training equipment and specifically how we make this display um, remote to the load cell itself and you can see the load cell is this aluminium element that's that the display is sort of built around so I'm kind of trying to f film this awkwardly while busy doing it so so forgive things moving in and out of shot I'll try and be as clear as possible so anyway the first order of business is to is to de uh, is to um, unscrew the whole uh, the whole enclosure so I'll just take the screws out make sure that we lose at least one of them so that we can annoy ourselves later that's a joke don't lose your screws too many people in this world with a too many screws loose or missing so let's not be those people okay so there it is um, disassembled and we can open it up and uh, so that's what it looks like on the inside now this contains all of the uh, all of the, the processing the circuitry the interfacing and uh, so that is it's just best to leave this as is we want to try and avoid avoid um, moving this at all this is the, this is what's going to contain the display and all the controls so there's really no need to to remove that all we need to do really is to remove the 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 actual load cell element itself of course we leave the battery compartment where it is as well and this is a little uh, I think it's a little cap or something not a hundred percent sure about that um, let's have a look yeah, I think that's a that might be a little bit a little cap or something um, anyway it doesn't need to shift either that can all stay where it is so really all we need to do is to take these these wires um, let's see there's uh, four of them there's a red and a white and a black and a green so all we really need to do is to extend these wires um, so it's it's a question of just getting um, just getting a, a multi-core cable with at least four cores um, and uh, and really just extending that out now what I've done in the past is to desolder remove the wires from their connection Ooh, that didn't sound great sorry um, what I've done in the past is to just uh, remove these wires from where they soldered onto these onto these uh, solder pads and uh, wire in a, uh, a, a separate multi-core cable in my case what I've used is um, is your garden variety data cable this is just an old data cable I had uh, lying around so of course in order to access the cores I'll just uh, briefly go through this. Um, it's a it's a complex operation that involves uh, doing this. I'm sure there are a lot of uh, a lot of IT folk out there that are having nightmares now because of what I'm doing. Anyway, we're really just interested in extending the uh, the conductors to the the load cell elements. So there's uh, and. And really, the, with the runs, the, the run lengths that we're talking about, interference isn't really going to be an issue. Um, 
And of course, there's not there's not uh, a lot of um, data that's being transferred. This is uh, this is essentially um, this is more than likely going to be an analog. Um, yeah, I believe this is an analog output. I might be wrong, but either way, I haven't found any uh, uh, any problems with extending these cables at all in in uh, the um, experiments that I've performed. So we, we just bear the conductors and there we've got four pairs. Cut this off. And there are four pairs. And then of course what we'll do is we just need uh, we just need four cores and uh, you can choose whatever colors you like. I'm not going to tell you which colors to choose, uh, but in our case, we'll probably just use um, orange, orange and white, and green and white, just for the purposes of this. And we're going to strip these. And once you've got them, once you've got them stripped, um, then you need to tin them using a bit of solder. You'll you'll obviously you'll need access to all of the all of the basic tools like a soldering iron. So now they're prepped. Once that's done, uh, and I've prepared the other end of this cable before, we can go to just removing the cables. And uh, typically, what I've done is just do is do this operation one at a time just to ensure that you get the right colors. Join them up correctly. So we need these two are not necessary because we're only going to be using four of the cores. Can trim these down so that they fit on the pads. Oh, it's awkward filming these kinds of DIY videos. That's why I tried to avoid this in the past. Okay, so. Going to remove the black cable first. Try not to burn the cables. That one removed. And what what you can do, which will make your job a little bit easier, and what I should have done in the beginning is to just just do a quick um, just do a quick note on which color goes where. So that was um, E minus, E plus, is it 
E minus E plus minus black um, E plus red and um, I minus white and I minus uh, or I plus green. Okay, so once you got your once you got your code, as you can see, um, there are mark uh, like there are markings on the on the circuit board itself, so you can just use those as a key, which uh, makes things a little bit easier and saves you from having to do it one at a time, which is going to get awkward here. Of course, I'm twisting my soldering iron cables up making sure to cause maximum damage and I'll just remove the rest of these okay so those are removed as you can see the wires are quite small so just be very careful about um, hurting them um, so what we can do now is we can just strip them back a little bit a little bit more to expose more of the conductor and and then we want to extend those with our multi core um, so what I've done uh, with the other examples that I've uh, that I've produced is I've um, I've connected this up and then I've used a heat shrink to just um, hold everything together, but I don't want uh, you don't want to make the heat shrink too tight on this because it could actually interfere with the operator. Unlikely that it's really going to interfere with the operation, but you want to try and just leave it really, uh, just just get it so that it uh, or just um, just apply heat until the point where it's it's just uh, it's just snug, so not not too tight. Although as I said, I, it's it's unlikely that it's going to interfere with operation too much. So, let's get our um, multi-core and what we can do is go back to our key and we can just decide which colors are going to be which uh, and in our case we will use uh, orange for E minus, orange, white, for E plus, and we'll use uh, green for green and green, white for white. So that's what we'll do. And so we can go ahead and start soldering those on. You might see the back of my head from time to time. Sorry, I need to get closer to this so I can actually see what I'm doing. I don't envy you having to see the back of my head. white and green okay. 
Okay. So, what I've done in the past now to get the cable out is to just pop the cable out, just drill a hole here and pop the cable out through that hole. Now, I don't have a drill with me at the moment, so uh, I'll leave that to your imagination. But what I do recommend is that you use a use a cable tie to um, wrap around this cable at a point that allows sufficient slack in here so that it's not so that we're not pulling on the connection points to the circuit board so that uh, the hole is just wide enough to allow the cable through but not wide enough to allow the 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 cable tie around it so it acts as a stop at that point so as i said i don't have a drill here with me at the moment so i'm not going to do that now and what we're going to do on the other side Just hook this around here before catastrophe. Now, as I said, what we're going to do is we're going to just um, just bear a, f a bit more of these conductors. little bit Just a sec, my boy is here to say goodbye to me. He's going to school. So we'll, I'll just pause this quickly. So we carry on. Uh, I managed to grab a, grab a drill. So we will, we shall quickly, gingerly, drill a little hole here. Okay. You get your hole. We can now pass this through. Hopefully. I'm going now. Thread this through. Okay, so I'll probably probably put the cable tie about there. Oops. 
So that should prevent the cable from getting pulled through. And then actually, for all intents and purposes, we should be able to close this because we've got all of the all of the colors written down on our handy dandy piece of paper. Okay, so that'll be our display. Now it's just a question of attaching the other bits and pieces. So for this, what I recommend we are going to need, what I recommend we're going to need is uh, are some green sleeves. These are just convenient to um, cover joints that you make in uh, comms cables. This one looks a bit sus, so we'll just get another one there. There you go. These are also great for gnawing upon in anger and frustration when you up in ceiling spaces trying to track down faults in nurse call systems. Um, yeah. I won't say any more about that. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to connect the orange to the black. So we shall just get this one out here. orange to black. I'm just going to wrap it around once I've once I've jointed them all up I'll, I'll solder them all all at once and uh, red to orange white And green to green. I'm glad I chose to make that logical. Typically I don't. And green white to white. Now make sure that they're all separated so you don't accidentally solder the whole mass together. And we're just going to come in with soldering iron and ensure that they're all properly connected. Okay, yeah. mm. love the smell of solder in the morning. Mm. 
then we can use the green sleeves to just ensure that those are going to remain permanent. Actually, I'm going to cut these a little bit shorter. It's about that short. We'll do. Pop those on to ensure we don't get any shorts. Although here in Australia I'm a strong proponent of shorts, uh, the kind that you wear, because it's hot here much of the time, except in winter when it's blimmin' cold. Some people still, still wear shorts when it's cold, but uh, I draw the line there. Okay, so now we've got that all beautifully sorted. What I might do is put a small cable tie in there just to ensure, ensure that these do not come off and the junction just stays intact. Just gonna make that nice and tight. Ensure that they're all popped over the joints, and then just make it nice and nice and tight, so that it's not gonna shift. Now, as you can tell, these wires are quite fine, and we don't want. Um, we don't want the uh, the cable to um, pull on these little wires. So what we can do is we can just cable tie this cable onto the load cell. So we'll need another cable tie here. Cable ties, wonderful invention. Um, I might actually hook it in here. Keep it on one side of this uh, of this um, uh, this hole here, obviously, because this is where the loads are going to be connected. Just to make it convenient. Okay, so that's unlikely to go anywhere. Of course, there's not really, there shouldn't be any load on this cable, but it's unlikely to shift now. So that's, that's your basic arrangement. And now, as I said, I'm not going to do this part of it, but what I've done in the past is to take a, uh, a large uh, heat, heat shrink sleeve put it over this whole section and just heat it until it holds everything snugly in place, but not so much that it starts um, shrinking into these gaps and potentially interfering with the operation of the load cell. It's unlikely, uh, given, the, given the kind of loads that we're talking about, that a little bit of heat shrink in there is going to make any difference whatsoever to the values that come out of this thing. But just, uh, just for peace of mind, Make sure that it's not too tight, that it just fits snugly and holds everything in place. Also, the heat shrink will then protect all of these fine cables and connection points as well from any accidental um, banging or rough use uh, during actual use of the device. What you could also use is you could use some uh, universal fix-it duct tape and just duct tape it all up. I typically wouldn't want to use this because um, anyone who's used duct tape uh, and uh, watch it degrade over the centuries, we'll know that uh, eventually the glue starts just getting really sticky and it comes off and it just gets manky. So 
I will typically want to use a, a piece of heat shrink here, which I, I won't do in this video because I don't feel that it's particularly necessary. If you, if you really need me to show you how to do the heat shrink bit, I can, but uh, it's fairly self-explanatory. So you'll slip the sleeve over, use a heat gun, be very careful when you use the heat gun, not to burn any of the insulation off the, off the, the, the little wires. So just, uh, just be ginger with the application of heat. You want to just keep it centered on the, um, on the, um, the heat shrink itself. Don't overheat the, uh, the aluminium either because you might interfere with some of the electronics, the, the, the um, strain gauges that are embedded in the, um, in the aluminium. Um, so just keep it on the heat shrink uh, and just as much as is necessary, as I said, to heat shrink until it's snug. Um, so I've got a couple of, I'm not sure if I've got some batteries hanging around yet, but we'll just, I'll just pause quickly, grab some batteries. So I found some batteries, chucked them in there. We'll turn them on and we'll see if this is, this is working. So, and there we go. working so yeah hopefully hopefully that was informative um, if you have any more questions about this procedure uh, don't hesitate to leave a comment um, and uh, yeah I hope this gives you enough information for you to go out and uh, and do the same uh, as I said in, in principle this is really simple it's just a question of extending um, this set of wires from the load cell element through to the point on the circuit board where it's attached and as, as you saw in the video it's very clear where these are attached and as long as you um, religiously keep a record of which goes what goes where you, you shouldn't go wrong um, so yeah um, I'll see you all again next time. Cheers.